All right, what's up, YouTube? Coming at you with another video for all my second gen Cummins owners. Uh, real quick, right here, this is what we got. I'm in the process right now of uh, installing this fan clutch. For any, any of you wanting to know the part number right there, there you have it. That's the part number for the fan clutch, but that's not what this video is about. Just want to share that information. If you guys want more info on that, hit me up in the comments and we'll get another video going. But this video is about <clears throat> A notorious uh, problem that these second gen Cummins have that it was a defect from Dodge and uh, I'm gonna get into it right now just a little bit of history on the truck much tr I had the tranny rebuilt uh, roughly I want to say 7,000 miles ago 7,000 10,000 somewhere around there but I had it fully rebuilt uh, prior to that the transmission was giving me the same problem and I'm gonna explain what I was uh, experiencing It was that surging 45 Depending it was around 45 to 60 miles an hour uh, The fourth gear the last gear would always give me problems, but it, it would surge like the They didn't know if, if I was stepping on the gas uh, the torque converter would lock up and unlock <clears throat> And prior to me, prior to me uh, rebuilding the transmission, you know, I, I looked a lot of videos up, and there's plenty of information on YouTube if you look up. But a lot of people have posted videos, and thank you to everybody who has done that. It's been of much, much help. So this is my little grain of rice. But uh, this cable right here, it comes off the alternator. I'm gonna show you right now. So this cable right here this cable originally this cable comes down around here was routed right here comes behind this comes right here and into this wire loom right here this harness this wiring harness right this is the alternator bracket your alternator right here and it's right here that wire runs right next to the alternator and if I get close up behind it runs right back behind the alternator and then comes and attaches to here okay there's a lot of people that suggest and there's nothing wrong with that that might fix your problem but at least for me like a lot of people have mentioned that's just like a band-aid okay so what i did originally i ran full foil i wrapped it all in full and then taped it with electrical tape as far as i'd say i got to about right here i was able to wrap it and and uh aluminum foil so supposedly what that does it creates a barrier like a protection with that wire because that wire if you follow it right here here's another it's a 10 mil there's three of them this one you continue following this right here there's another one right here and then it goes down into right here right here okay and if you follow it and, and you continue following it, it has like four or five little wires, right? Four or five little wires. But that's one of the band-aids. And I call it a band-aid like many other people have called it a band-aid just because it might, might not help or it might just fix your problem. You never know. But for me, I did that. It did not fix my problem, okay? I started from the least expensive route and worked my way up the food chain. Next thing, you got the PCM back there. Let me show you. you. Got the PCM back here. Let's see, right here. This is a ground, and this wire, this black one right here. This one, if you follow it, it runs down all the way down here to the PCM, right, right here, on your passenger passenger side of the vehicle. You follow it down and there's a ground it and it goes into your pcm okay so the second option would be to clean all your grounds your battery terminal and run a cable which i did right here it's that cable i ran a cable from here to the post negative end to the pcm make sure all my grounds were all the grounds were clean and the bat battery battery terminals were clean too um, there's a wire right there. After that, that did not fix it. So 
go to the third option, which was, let me see if I can see it here. Let's see. It's this. You splice a wire going into the PCM, which you can't really see it, but it's, let me see. This wire right here. I don't have the part number off the top of my head, but if you look it up, it's, it's right here. B, D, B next to that red one, right, right there. So what that is, it's an apps noise. It's like a, a noise cancellation from BD Diesel. What that does, that eliminates the, the frequency noise that comes off the alternator that goes to the PCM. And also that might help your problem, which when I did that, it did for the time being, okay? It fixed my problem. I went and got the transmission rebuilt and I wasn't I wasn't happy 100% but at least it wasn't doing the the lock up and unlock locking and unlocking okay it wasn't doing that so it fixed it I used the vehicle and all of a sudden one day went to go drive the truck and it started doing it like crazy it started doing it all the way from 35 even at 70 70 cruising it would just unlock and lock, unlock and lock, unlock and lock, and I'm all, dang. Transmission rebuilt, brand new, transmission rebuilt. I had that BD diesel to eliminate the noise from the alternator going to the PCM over there in the corner. I had did the foil tape. There was only one last thing that I, ha I had not done, and that's because these little band-aids fixed the issue. At least it seemed like it fixed the issue, okay? So at this point, I'm all time to order a new PCM, look at other options. But there was one last thing that I should have done from the beginning. So anybody watching this video and it's got this far, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, do this first. Okay? Take it from someone that's already done all the other stuff and, and just go ahead and do it. It took me about $15, $15 in, in an hour of time. And that's with me going to the store and buying the stuff that I needed. And I'm going to explain exactly what I did. Which, there's other videos out there that explain it too, but this is just my video. So what I ended up doing, I took all the foil tape off, the electrical tape. This is how I did it. I took this right here off, this bolt. I left the belt on, okay? There's plenty of ways to do it, but this is just how I did it. I took this bolt off, lifted this up, obviously. This has tension because you're still leaving the band on, so the alternator is going to come down a little bit. So with this up, I started cutting into this wire loom right here. It has plastic that I just carefully, you know, with some scissors and, and a knife. Just be careful because there's other wires in here. You don't want to, you don't want to poke or cut, splice any of these wires that are in here. You just slowly, you know, be patient. Three 10 mil bolts, one right here, right there where my fingers at. This one, this one over here, and then the other ones right here. You could take this off if you want the hose, you know, give you a little bit more room, but you don't need to do that. I didn't, I didn't do that. So be patient, take all the wires apart and follow that wire, okay? Which is this one right here. This one has this connection right there. Follow that, okay? It's gonna come, you're gonna trace it all the way back down to right here. This is where it comes in, okay? So like I said, comes into there and once it gets to here it's not going to be long enough for you to run it all the way and rerun it but that's fine because you're going to go buy yourself some eight gauge wire i bought four feet which i didn't need that much but that's just how much i bought and what i did i ran it from here can't really see but i ran it on top of the, the radiator you can't see the wire because i put i bought also that little protection right here and I ran it alongside this, comes over here, this, this wire loom from the battery. I ran it all the way up to about, I'd say right here I spliced it, okay? I spliced the wire and I was gonna solder it together but I just wanted to see if it was gonna fix it. So I haven't soldered it together yet but I bought some nice wire joints, you know, and I crimped it and I taped it up real nice so I'm pretty confident that for now it's gonna do but I'll, I'll go back and do it the right way which solder the wires together but I just wanted to see if it was gonna fix my problem so I splice it right there and then the other end 
I spliced it. Let's see. I spliced it somewhere around here. Right here. Okay. And you could reroute it however you want. You know, you could you could have come down here. Obviously, you don't want to reroute it anywhere next to the alternator because that's the whole point. That's that is. I'll get to that in a second, but that's what you're trying to avoid, okay? You don't want to route it over the engine bay or anything. So I thought this was the best thing right here for now. It's not the cleanest, but it, it, for me, it works. So I ran it right here next to the radiator cap. Comes down right here behind the battery. Right here behind the battery, alongside the battery. And this is where I connected, where the air, air filter box is at. And this battery post right here. This is the connection. So that's how I, I ran it one more time. Going all the way over here, top of the radiator, along there. And that takes it away from this. And check it out guys, that is your main problem, okay? You guys wonder, did it fix my issue? As soon as I did that, yes, I went to go test drive the vehicle and the surging was gone. Not only was the surging gone, but the shifts the shifts felt stronger and different even the the way the engine was running i, I think just uh, the magnetic field and the noise of the poor design from dodge from the get-go that this is letting that uh magnetic field is interfering with that wire and it's very sensitive like any kind of uh, variation in the in the reading it's gonna the computer it'll mess with your it'll mess with your tps throttle position sensor right here that's why the truck the computer is it's it's reading a, a a voltage a variation uh, i don't know exactly the numbers but it's reading something wrong and the computer sending the signal to the throttle positioning sensor and it's not it's not knowing exactly what you're doing so that's why you keep on locking and unlocking locking and locking and it's very sensitive so the the slightest variation of noise that contacts into that wire it's going to mess it up and it's going to cause that problem so like I said, I had that problem. That was my my last my last bet to go ahead and fix the issue. So what I did, I, I like I said, I, I did that. It took me about an hour. I went to go test drive the truck, and it, it runs like a champ. Runs like a tiger. She running good. So my advice for every, anybody having that problem before you take it to the transmission shop, uh, you know, there's a lot of shops out there that either they they know that it's not the transmission and they're going to charge you from new transmission like i said my transmission has just been rebuilt so I, I, I was leaning towards it wasn't that it could be you never know they're rebuilt they can make mistakes but or it could be a misdiagnose you know maybe you do take the transmission shop and, and they they might really think it isn't transmission but at the end of the day like i said it's, it's always better to to go the least most expensive route and uh because that would suck, you know. You go, you. I paid thirty five hundred dollars to have my transmission rebuilt, and uh, you go do that, and then you come back and you still have the issue. Trust me, that that's not a great feeling. That that does not feel good at all, you know. You put these trucks. Whoever owns these trucks, they know, and and if they're they're working on them and they're fixing them up, it's very expensive to to have any type of work done to these trucks or to have it in tip top shape which eventually that is my plan i'm i'm going that's why i'm doing like i said at the beginning this fan clutch uh, i haven't really noticed and i don't think it's really bad or, or going out it's just for pre preventive ma maintenance just to make sure down the road i'm pretty sure it's either the one that's been in the truck or i don't know how long it's been on there but just a peace of mind i want to know it's brand new i've been through everything else with the flush and everything but but that's not what the video was about. Like I was saying, go ahead and, and do that. Just, you know, an hour of time, $15. It's eight gauge wire. I'll show it to you right now. I'll show you the wire right now. Just so you guys know what we're talking about. This is what the wire. I got this wire like for two bucks maybe. It's just regular wire eight gauge is the eight gauge is the same exact exact size that's on there so you won't have a problem and yeah like i said it's worth it hopefully this video helps someone's going through the 
experienced the same issue, the same problem. Like I said, skip the foil tape, skip the BD diesel. Uh, I think that part is the the noise cancellation part that ties into the PCM. I think it's 50 bucks. I think, don't quote me on that. But skip that first. I think this is this is the, the right way to do it. It's a flaw from Dodge, and like I said, if anything changes and, I, and that reoccurs and I have that again, I will come back and make an update video. But as of right now, like I said, she runs like a tiger. She runs like a champ. And as soon as I did that, it eliminated my problem. So um, I'd say that's the route to go. And, and obviously, check your alternator. That's another thing. These alternators, this is not a brand new one. It's very hard. You can buy brand new ones and, and a real good one that costs like $500. I just went with, you know, your auto parts store one or remanufactured one. But obviously, while this, when this is running, you want to go ahead and make sure that it's not letting out more uh, AC noise than it should. If you guys want me to make a video on how to check that, I will. But look into that. There's plenty of videos out there. Of people showing you how to check the alternator and don't do a bench test because it's not the same you want to make sure this is on the truck it's loaded and uh, and check it while it's running the vehicle like I said uh, look up videos if you guys want me to make one go ahead and leave some comments and I'll go ahead and, and make a short little video on that but that's pretty much it you know it, it it saves a lot of headache a lot of time when people throw these videos out there you know uh, just a little disclaimer, I am by no means certified in any of this stuff that I'm talking about or I just get my knowledge from all the helpful people that put out videos and information out there and I just dive into it. So that's my story. Hopefully it helps somebody and if you guys want more videos on this truck, which like I said, I'm working, working progress, trying to leave a brand spanking new in tip top shape, go ahead and, and post comments and I'll make more videos. You guys have a blessed day and peace out.